to our second video in Let's Talk Mental Health. Today we have Sunea Mohamed, yes. who is a doula. So something different for all of our moms and uh, expectant mothers out there. Uh, Sumeya is in private practice and you own a company called Mother's Intuition. Yes, I do. Okay. And that is dedicated to women and their motherhood. And her company assists with pre and postnatal exercises, massages, antenatal classes, birth and many other classes. I yes. Okay. <laughs> so you have two branches in Kilimanjaroburg and Durban. Yes, I do. And you plan to expand to Cape Town and Hopping. That's the plan. Hopefully, maybe by next year. Oh, that's great. Okay. So, um, you can find Sumeya's details in the description below. But Sumeya, would you like to tell them how to contact you on email or cell phone? Yeah, sure. So you guys can go onto my website. It's www.mothersintuition.co.za. You'd find my number and my email address on there and you can just contact me there. Okay, perfect. So thank you again for joining us. I feel like this topic is something that is not really spoken about a lot in society. Yeah. And, um, our, our guest earlier this week was uh, Kajal Maraj, who spoke about her postpartum depression and how pregnancy was for her. Okay. So I think you coming here today ties up the best of both worlds because we yeah. had it from an experiential point of view and now we're getting it from a more theoretical coping mechanism kind yeah. of view. So, okay, please tell me what exactly is a doula? <laughs> so a doula basically is a female that's trained in pregnancy that helps you during pregnancy during birth and postpartum we help you during labor with non-medical pain relief okay. um, prenatally we can assist you depending on what your doula has studied towards she would be able to assist you with antenatal classes a pregnancy massage we can do um, if you have if you're having any sort of emotional issues we can do like i do trauma and energy release as well and we do exercise classes prenatally to help the whole process of birth. Okay, so it's quite a lot um, on the side of helping the mom. Yes. So I have to ask, what do you do to help the dad? <laughs> <laughs> so dads, these these creatures are, are very different. They wired very differently to us. A lot of dads, um, of, they don't know how to deal when moms are in pain and in a vulnerable space because they're quite used to the, the females or the, the wife basically doing everything that she needs to and now they're seeing her in the in a different light and they don't know how to deal with it okay so dads who are interested in in classes 10 antenatal classes so my classes are one-on-one -on -one with the couple i don't okay. do group settings in a hurry and dads basically learn how to help moms during labor they help with what to do during birth they learn that what's their what, what's needed of them during birth. So okay. a lot of the time, the ro their role is to guard her space. Okay. Right? She's not able to vocalize. She's somebody that's familiar to them, very familiar in a, a clinical setting. Yes. That is somebody that you know and that you're familiar with. So it helps the, intra the entire transition during labor and birth. Mm -hmm. It is always nice to have someone familiar. Yes, with absolutely. <laughs> I mean, it's, birth is so clinical in a hospital. Yes. You need something that reminds you of home. And that's that love familiar. And that yes. That, that is support. Yes. Okay, so um, I'm hearing you say uh, antenatal, post and pre, pre and postnatal yes. classes. But what exactly do those entail? Okay, so our prenatal exercise classes um, are very specific in terms of your pelvis because okay. your pelvis is, is housing this baby, your ligaments are stretching, mm -hmm. you have lower back pain. So we help you to ease off those pains while still maintaining a good fitness level that is safe for you within okay. a safe environment. And we do exercises that basically help baby to engage after a certain period to allow the process of birth to be easier for you. Okay. Right. Postnatal exercises will help getting your core back in order because your, your center of gravity has changed considerably during pregnancy. Um, we also get the muscles back together. So there's something that's called diastasis recti, which is an entire separation of the abdominal muscle. Now there are specific exercises that we do to help get that back together. Um, we have a lot of moms become conscious of the weight that they've gained during pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So we we help you help you lose that in a safe space where it doesn't affect your milk supply. Okay. Because uh, excessive and quick weight loss will affect your milk supply, and then you're going to have problems with breastfeeding. Okay, I never knew that. Yeah. <laughs> and your antenatal classes? So antenatal classes I usually do from six months onwards because I cover breathing quite in depth 
and that breathing needs practice it's not breathing that you can do on the day of your class and then you go on and just use it during labor so you have to be used, you have to be practicing it because it's all a mind game we these breathing techniques that i teach you trick the mind mm -hmm. and the mind controls all of the pain besides everything else that it controls yeah. right so we do um pain coping i teach you exercises that help with your with engaging your baby and that are safe to do during pregnancy um, we do CPR and choking because it, it is something that could happen and it's so easy to be able to save a life. Mm -hmm. It's just a few techniques that you need to know. We do an in-depth uh, module on breastfeeding because a lot of the moms that come to me want to exclusively breastfeed, mm -hmm. which is very difficult in this day and age when everybody is trying to give you a bottle. That's true. Right? <laughs> so we have moms saying, oh, but everybody's telling me that I don't have milk because this baby is crying inconsolably for however long and I feel like I'm just constantly feeding but that's what the first six weeks are it's a complete adjustment from the womb into our environment mm -hmm. and milk supply works that way the more you feed the more milk you you create so feeding that much basically the baby's programming your body on how much of milk to make because it's it's a hormonal cocktail that makes milk okay so all of this is very um I see a lot of hormonal changes yes. and it's a big psychological adjustment oh, yes. to everything. Yes, as well, yes, yes, obviously. yes. Absolutely. So I wanted to know, um, from a mental health perspective, right. um, how does this actually affect the mom? Mm -hmm. And and I know that uh, when you give birth you kind of readjust your role mm -hmm. and um, a lot of women might feel like they lose their identity a bit. Yeah, and 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 that is something big, and, and I want to know uh, what advice and how do how do you how do you help moms deal with this basically? What ab what advice do you have for expecting moms? Because a lot of people, like you like you said earlier, talk about um, pregnancy and how good it is to be pregnant and you know, preparing for the aftermath. Yes, and it has also changed um, from when our parents kind of gave birth and, and the generations before them. A postpartum or these pre and postnatal antenatal classes were not a thing then. Yes. Um, how is how has that shift sort of changed as well? Like. Okay. Yeah. So previously, a lot of women used to go with the flow of I'm pregnant and I'm gonna go with the flow and I'm gonna give birth, but it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. People are not realizing that it this it takes a deep shift within you as a woman. And we were chatting earlier, and I said. Uh, everybody tells you about being pregnant and it's amazing or it's difficult depending on their experience but nobody ever tells you about how your identity changes and yes. part of being a mother we have to give up what we knew and ourselves to be basically because now you have a new role that is completely surrounding your baby mm -hmm. and that shift is like you, it, pregnancy lasts a certain time birth lasts a certain time but being a mother lasts forever and who you knew yourself to be and who you have to grow to be are two completely different people. And that's where postnatal depression comes in for some women um, because, for example, it's not limit to, limited to what I'm saying, but if she didn't want the baby, um, was she raped? Is it a teen pregnancy, mm -hmm. right? And these, these girls need so much of support because they have something out of a traumatic experience when it comes to rape. They have something that could have been peer pressure related when it comes to teenage pregnancy and the father of the child is nowhere to be found but the mom has the baby and she now has all of these social stigmas that attach to her and she needs so much of support in order to bring up this baby because at the end of the day she's still a mom and a mom will do whatever is needed of her for her baby. There's, there's no two ways about it. So in that sense we need so much of support. Um, women need support after birth mm -hmm. sometimes more than they need during mm -hmm. birth because you know you everybody makes it seem like you know mother motherhood comes so naturally but for a lot of women it doesn't yes right and they have a baby that's crying inconsolably they don't know what to do dads don't generally know what to do mm -hmm. especially with a first-time baby you know or first-time mom you don't know what's going, going on, on. Yes. like you got to keep eyeing the hardest part of this was to get the baby out but what happens after you yeah. up all night feeding the baby or baby's cramping and you're so used to just packing your bag and saying okay fine i'm going out today yes and it's no more like that because now your life revolves around the baby uh what time is baby sleep time why is baby so crabby i'm going to a restaurant and this baby is crying and everyone's looking at me and i, I don't know what to do 
and we have a lot of moms then coming in with postnatal depression because they don't know how to cope they don't have support and that's how doula comes in as well because we are so trained with all of these things that we can we can offer you different options when it comes to all of these situations but the most important thing is support support is so needed for our moms I hear you saying, you know, babies always crying and, 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 and babies are, that's what babies do. But is there anything to do to kind of strengthen the communication between mom and child? Because um, I mean, obviously it's two different languages mm. and two different, I mean, it's the same, but it's two different people that yes. are involved and there is a language barrier for, <laughs> for a few years. But is there anything to do that can kind of strengthen that relationship or that communication rather between mother and child? Okay, so as you, as your baby grows, moms learn the cries. Okay. Certain cries are for certain things. So there's a cry when baby's hungry that mom will learn. Like she wouldn't even try doing it. It just happens automatically. Okay. She will learn that this baby is hungry or they bring their legs up to their chest when they're cramping and they, okay. they ride their bodies around. And moms learn all of these things unconsciously. So the most important thing that we find is skin to skin. Okay. Right? So as soon as baby is born, there's something called the golden hour. Mm -hmm. And it's doulas. And I'm so glad to see that the hospitals are now coming on board as well. As soon as baby is born, they put baby skin to skin on mom. Okay. Okay. So they found that that has transfers antibodies. So babies are born with no immunity. They gain the immunity from breastfeeding, which is why it's so important. And skin to skin passes on antibodies. It uh, stabilizes baby's heart rate. It stabilizes sugar levels. There's a whole variety of things that skin to skin does. But the most important thing that skin to skin does is that it creates bonding. Okay. Okay. So bonding between mom and baby, being skin to skin with no hat on. It's very important that there's no hat on baby because the pheromones that are released from baby trigger bonding hormones from a mom. Okay. So if you're blocking that off, then you're blocking off the pheromones and it's going to yes. be a little harder for that to happen. And pheromones do come off through the head. Yes, they do, right? So it's important that we have skin to skin immediately after birth for at least an hour. Okay. That in itself helps bonding and it's not only subjected to moms. Dads do skin to skin as well and the, the latest research has found that it, it rewires their brain, the dad's okay. brain. So he becomes more wanting to do things because more responsible towards the baby mm -hmm. he wants to change nappies he wants to buff the baby and moms need that yes. because especially for moms breastfeeding exclusively she's constantly in use yes. she appreciates somebody buffing the baby or somebody changing the nappy right That's true. and we want dads to do that yes. so a lot of moms that have babies in theater now certain hospitals won't allow skin to skin um, but we get dads to do skin to skin immediately in the nursery okay. So that's very important that we get skin to skin done because that creates the bond immediately that and that communication. Okay. That's very interesting. Um, I wanted to know, uh, you said through best breastfeeding that we uh, babies get antibodies yes. and build the immune system to that. What about babies that are not breastfed that do the bottle feeding method? Um, is there any downside to that? Or Okay, so look, everybody has different preferences. Um, the World Health Organization has stated that baby should be breastfed exclusively for six months okay. and then extended to a year, oh, sorry, to two years. So you do your introduction of solids at six months and not before that because there's something that's called the virgin gut. Okay. And so the gut basically is open to all type of pathogens. So if we are, when you do the initial breastfeeding of the colostrum, it lines up the gut completely to prevent anything from going through, okay. right? So. That itself, if you if they're unable to breastfeed for an extended time, at least breastfeed for the first six weeks because it's okay. so so important. Formula is basically dehydrated cow's milk. Okay. Okay, and cows and humans are two different species. There is a place for formula. I'm not. I'm not. Please don't take me wrong in and think that I'm saying that moms that who bottle feed are inferior or anything like that because I support moms in both aspects. Okay. We all have different preferences and different needs. And different requirements, mm -hmm. right? Moms that are going back to work um, might and not be able to, to okay? Yes. So there is definitely a, de a decrease in the amount of antibodies that they're going to get. They're not going to get that from formula. That's why it's so important for at least the first six weeks to breastfeed if you are not planning on beyond that. Okay. That's interesting. I mean, you know, uh, we want strong babies today. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> we do want strong babies. So, um, 
how else do you, oh sorry, do you have any advice for expecting mothers? Prepare. <laughs> Seriously prepare in every possible way that you can. Read the correct books. And having said that, the good books are not the ones you find on the bookshelf, unfortunately. Okay, right? so, so these need to be ordered. Um, like Anna Mae Gaskin is amazing when it comes to bathing. Michelle O'Dent is fabulous, right? But you will not find that uh, in a hurry on a bookshelf at your local bookstore. So those you can order. If you're planning on breastfeeding, The Womanly Art of Breastfeeding is a great book. You can order that as well. Go for the right type of antenatal classes. Um, Doula-led and midwife-led antenatal classes are very different from antenatal classes that you would find at your hospital, for example, because we find them pushing on hospital protocol. Okay. So that becomes like a routine and moms don't know that. Mm -hmm. right? Whereas if you go for a doula or midwife-led antenatal class, they're giving you different options so you can make choices and inform decisions. Okay. when it comes to your birth and your baby and life beyond that. And I would assume that in a doula or a midwife-led class that you kind of get more psychological support yes. as well because as you said, hospital is protocol so it's yes. more clinical, clinical environment. Yes. Again. And yes, you may get used to that environment but it doesn't so sort of curb anxieties that no. you might feel. No, and that's the thing with the doula is you develop a relationship before you actually give birth as opposed to going to the hospital and having some that's someone that's on duty to take care of you. You develop a relationship prior to birth. So when you are in hospital and when you're feeling vulnerable, there's somebody that's familiar to you with you. Okay. And that makes such a big difference because women supporting women in this specific process has a better outcome. That's true. Because I guess you understand and also yes. you have um, a baby yourself. So yes. you understand the anxieties and, and the hormonal changes and yeah. the pains that um, <laughs> emotional pains as well <laughs> is the pains that a woman is going yes. through in, in that process so how do you help a woman cope with anxiety afterwards i know that we spoke about um the communication of the skin to skin and all of that but just the mother themselves right um nobody else in the equation yeah. how do you help them i know that some mothers might feel like disconnect from the baby i suppose yes they do so how do you help or, or what are rather the, the common um things that you hear a woman say about their baby and how do you help them with yes. that so for example i won't say postnatal depression but perinatal distress okay. right um you would go to a first time mom who for example probably has been trying for years and it finally happened and she finds herself saying, you know, I should be so grateful for this baby because I waited so long, but I don't know what I'm doing. I'm so overwhelmed mm -hmm. and I have no support from so, so and so because this is what I want for my baby, but everybody else has an opinion on what I should it's do, true. Yeah. right? And then that's the point where you turn to your husband and you tell him, I need you mm -hmm. to guard the space and I need you to stick by the decisions that we've made. So communication is so important. And that's why I say when it goes to pregnancy and birth, you can't go with the flow. That's right. You have to plan for it, right? So I basically sit down a mom after birth if I've done your birth and we have a postnatal visit where we do a complete debriefing of your birth. So okay. just say she wanted to have a normal birth and she ended up with an emergency C-section and she's feeling overwhelmed and a little bit inferior to other moms. And there is, there is no inferiority. Your baby has been born. You tried your best. Um, so basically it's affirmation that you've tried, you validate emotions, you let her know that it's okay, she's not inferior in mm -hmm. any way, although some families make you feel that way. We have a lot of uh, families come to the hospital after someone's given birth, was it a normal birth or a Caesar? Mm. Does it really matter? No, it doesn't. Really, right? the baby's health okay. happy and healthy. Right? So things like that trigger a mom mm -hmm. and that's when it starts making her feel like she has an issue she wasn't able to do this or she wasn't able to do that or she's had a really traumatic birth births can become traumatic right mm -hmm. they change at any second but again prep during labor i mean prep during pregnancy for better outcome during birth mm -hmm. so if we've had any um birth trauma i specifically do eye movement therapy to uh help with that so that's part of my trauma and emotional release which i would do at your birth debriefing at your postnatal visit okay so what is eye movement therapy so eye movement therapy works on a subconscious level okay where we basically release release emotions that you wouldn't even know you have okay so it's, it's a different process that we do it's part of uh, our healing which i have done as a, an energy modality energy healing 
So part of the energy release that we do there with trauma and uh, emotions comes into with eye movement therapy. It's really important, I think, for mothers to actually feel the emotion that they're going yes. through um, because it is suppressed a lot of the time because you need to be the perfect mother now. <laughs> yes, yes. birth and the baby is fine and, um, you know, but they don't understand that there is a lot that goes into it. Oh. A lot of preparation and a lot from the aftermath. And yes. We, I think that all women do not need and they do not deserve the third degree. No, they don't. They don't. You don't deserve that from anybody. And it's important for dads to guard that space because mom's so emotional mm -hmm. and healing from whatever type of birth she had, she doesn't need anybody else telling her what to do. Okay, so we've spoken a lot about um, emotion and skin to skin and all of that, but what do you do with the emotional disconnect uh, between mother and child? Mm -hmm. uh, do you refer to a psychologist or...? Okay, so there's a point that comes where there's only so much that I can do within my scope of practice. So it depends if a mom's being physically, emotionally or mentally abused because they all count as abuse. Mm -hmm. And sometimes being emotionally abused is far worse than being physically abused yes. because it leaves deep bruises. And then I would refer to a psychologist. Okay. okay. Or I would say, did you speak to your doctor about this? Has your doctor prescribed any medication are you willing to wanting to go the natural route because then I can refer you to a homeopath that specializes in this type of thing or I can refer you to a psychologist who can get deeper into whatever the situation is because emotional blockage is very big especially if the mom's been raped or the mom's been uh, in, a, in an abusive relationship where she was planning to leave and then suddenly she fell pregnant mm -hmm. and with teen moms I and guess. teen moms yes teen moms need so much of help um, so it's very important then to refer to the next professional who can get deep into it within their scope of practice as well. And from there, I have clients coming back. We go back and forth until they find that space where, okay, after a few months and sometimes needing antidepressants, there's a place for that as well. And there, there shouldn't be any sort of, a, for you to be ashamed of taking an antidepressant because that's helping yourself. Mm -hmm. right. It is It is important to take that medication because yes. that medication sort of gets you to a stable level where you can rationalize yes. and gather yourself and gather, gather yes. your thoughts on a proper way to move forward. Absolutely. Yes. So we, we always come to a point where we are now resolved and we are okay. okay. But I have clients phoning me like after four years just needing to chat because that is all you need. You need somebody that's willing to listen to you without judging you for whatever situation you're in. Absolutely. And actually, I was just going to ask, so how long do you support a mom post birth? My mom's always say, can't you just support us until they're ready to get married or something <laughs> like that? <laughs> that would actually be great. <laughs> but like, we end up becoming friends. All of my clients, especially if I've done your birth, we end up becoming friends. Um, and every now and then they'd call to chat, you know, I'm having this issue, I'm having that issue. Do you know somebody that can help? Because you then become a network. Mm -hmm. And it's really refreshing to hear that you do refer out to yes. um, other professionals. Uh, uh, sometimes a lot of people try to work within their profession but out of their scope. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it can be really detrimental, especially with in such a delicate relationship yes. with mother and child and so many hormones. Um, yeah. going on and the huge psychological adjustments very yes. refreshing to know that you uh do refer to oh, people you. who are well versed in whatever yes. whatever your client needs so that is i'm very happy with that <laughs> um so are there any universal challenges so each woman has their own specific um Challenge. journey or yeah. challenge um but is there anything that is that you are seeing as a blanket over all women that they are going through living in our world today can i just say that's mom shaming really i i come across mom shaming so often because i don't know women are meant to support each other if we don't support each other who do we rely on to do that mm -hmm. okay like i said a bottle feeding mom and a breastfeeding mom have their own challenges you can't compare chalk and cheese and you can't judge yes you can't compare a mom that's given birth by a cesarean birth and a mom that's given birth naturally. They both have their own challenges. Mm -hmm. They both take a lot of um, mental prep to get to that point, mm -hmm. right? And it's very difficult for a mom that's been going like natural completely and at the last minute needs to go for a season. and she'll say, yes, let's go. But the mental prep that she needs to go through to get to that point after she said yes already because her baby will always come first for her, 
it takes a lot of mind power and mental prep to go ahead with something mm. like that and that in, in itself is um i wouldn't say a struggle but it's it's something that causes so much after that i can imagine right because she's been wanting this she's mm-hmm. planned the entire pregnancy for this i have moms crying um because you need to go from normal to cesarean birth they both birth mm. okay they both can be beautiful they both have their place in this world yes. right cesarean births have saved a lot of lives that's true right and it boils down to choosing your doctor if you want a normal birth are you choosing a doctor with high normal birth rates mm. okay or are you choosing a doctor that's really awesome when it comes to cesarean So you have to choose very carefully. You have to choose hospitals very carefully. Certain hospitals are more versed on cesarean births than normal births. That's true. Same thing with breastfeeding. I've had a client have a normal birth at a hospital that was had very high cesarean rates, and they didn't have any pamphlets to give her with regards to normal birth because we mostly do cesarean births here. Wow. So they're not exactly prepared for exactly the other side of the yes. Point. So you have to have to choose your caregiver and choose your place of birth carefully. as well and mom shaming needs to stop we need to support each other so um this mental prep that comes from the birthing yes well the birthing option <laughs> rather um how do you help moms choose who just don't know the option which okay. which one they want to do how do you help them choose what advice can you give our viewers today yes who are struggling with which way to go okay so Being a doula, we focus more on on the natural, normal type of birth. But I, in my antenatal class, I give you both options. I let you know what happens during both processes. I have moms coming to me for my antenatal class who are having first babies but are choosing an elective Caesar. That is something that's their decision. It's not my place to sway them, right? Then I have moms coming to me who want to have a normal birth after Caesar, and there are very few doctors in Durban that will actually do it, and they do it quite often. Mm-hmm. right so then in that case i would refer you to that doctor because i know that that specific doctor will be able to give you that outcome but i give them all options all pros all cons and they make an informed decision okay so you just educate them yes. basically because it is a big decision it is and um you have to know everything <laughs> <laughs> yes you do before you uh before you actually make the decision and i have to ask something and i think a lot of women are afraid of this is um the pain management of giving birth whether it's a c-section whether it's a natural birth yes and the healing process afterwards how how is that okay so look normal birth pain is hardcore right there's no lying about it but if you are prepared for it if you're practicing your breathing and if you're practicing your visualizations it will be easier okay, okay. so visualizations we do different visualizations while we're doing breathing that helps take the mind away from other things. Okay. Right? So that helps. Cesarean births, I always tell moms, the after birth, the care is so important. The pain is a lot. Please take the medication. Okay. It has its place. Take it. But also see a homeopath that can give you medication that aids your body in healing. Cuz um pain medication can sometimes make your body weak or you Yes, yes, it's not don't don't rely on it completely. <laughs> But take it in that first week when you need it the most. Usually by the second week, once you've passed the first week, the seizure becomes more manageable. You are able to walk around a little bit more easier. The first week is the part that's hard. Okay. And in terms of a natural birth, how is the pain management after that? Way easier than a cesarean birth. Okay. Completely easier. It's bearable. We have different things in place to help you heal faster. Okay. And in terms of um for women who want to have a second baby, yeah, and with the two birthing options is there any recommendation that you would make for women who want uh, to have a second baby uh, in terms of birthing options or usually when they know that they can have a normal birth and it hasn't been a traumatic experience they are not even considering anything else because they you know you can do it now yes right so they usually going for a normal birth again but also being open minded that birth can change at any time and you might need a cesarean birth right um mums who have traumatic first births are wanting a cesarean birth because of the trauma so what we focus on then is on a trauma release to try and work through what happened during that birth okay. to release it and usually by the end of the three sessions that I do moms are now okay you know what i understood what caused the trauma 
and I've let go of it and I'd like to try for normal birth but maybe this time I want to take an epidural as pain management okay. so you have to allow for your moms to make a choice and it lies in their hands completely but your job as a doula is to basically educate and care okay. and be kind be very kind. kindness <laughs> is so important in all aspects yes. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm not too familiar with the terminology, but um, for a mom who has had a cesarean and then she wants to do a normal birth, yes. it's called a VBAC. Yes. Okay, so I know that this is actually really dangerous. Can you please tell people why? <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it, look, in government hospitals, you have a better likelihood of getting a VBAC because there's no funds to keep going for caesars, okay. right? So they'll allow you to VBAC. It is actually research that a VBAC is far safer than a second Caesar. Really? Yes, you have a 1% chance. It, the percentage might have changed since I've last checked of what we call a placent, uh, an abruption um, of the, the scar of where you've given birth. Midwives do it quite regularly uh, in Cape Town and in Johannesburg. Okay. And we sometimes have it done here in Cape Town as well. Okay, so can you just tell, uh, tell us um, what happens in a VBAC or what, what, why is it considered somewhat dangerous? Okay, so usually they tell you to wait 18 months between a Caesar and conception of the next child to allow for the scar to heal, okay. right? So what they find to be dangerous is that they're scared that the scar will open up, Okay. right? And that is what becomes dangerous because now the wound's opened up and it's deep inside and then the baby becomes uh, goes becomes at risk and the mom as well. Okay, right? and it's sort of a which life to save situation? Depends on the situation okay. and what's happening. But the the doctors here in Durban that do VBAC very, very, very seldomly have that issue. Okay, so it is it has been successful. Yes, okay. it has. So it is something that women can look into yes. doing. Okay, so before we um, end off, uh, I really want to thank you for coming and sharing all this amazing knowledge and education with us. Thank and you so sure much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's a really important topic and I'm sure that a lot of moms will actually benefit from this. Um, a lot of um, expecting moms and a lot of uh, women who are considering getting pregnant. It is something to know before yes. <laughs> you make this step. Yes. Um, is there any last uh, advice that you would like to give our listeners? Or Yes, definitely. So, you know, in the last few weeks, South Africa has had some really dark times in terms of rape and murder. And it has been found that the way we give birth impacts our kids and how they are born. Are they being born in traumatic times? How, what is the mom's emotions during pregnancy that are now passing on to, to baby? Like, you know, perinatal psychology is such a big, vast uh, subject. And it all boils down to what type of births we have. Okay. The types of births we have are fundamentally linked to the type of people that we have in our environment and in our midst. So it starts with mom and dad. Okay, so it's sort of being making sure that you are in the right mind space. And that you have a gentle birth. Okay. Right, so that's a whole different uh, topic when it comes to psychology and how it affects your baby and the time in which your baby is born because so much is imprinted at that time. Mm -hmm. So that's why research has now found that babies need to be born into safe, gentle environments as opposed to completely clinical um, conveyor belt, one in, one out type of system. Yeah. So regardless of which method you yes. choose, it's always important that it's not traumatic for you, for baby or for dad. Yes. And to ensure that skin to skin contact, if you as a mom are not available to do it, the dad can do it. Yes. As well, it's very important. and. Um, Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. very informative. I have a little gift for you. Thank Just you so much. For everything. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. Um, uh, to our viewers, if you have a question for Smeya, you can leave it in the comments below or you can send us an email at info at projectmeessay.co.za um, and we will also have Samaya's contact details. Uh, if you are feeling shy, you can contact her directly. But that's no problem. No problem at She's all. She's very easy to talk to. <laughs> she really is. Um, please like and share our video as you never know uh, when there might be a mommy in need who needs to hear these inspiring educational words and please subscribe to our channel. So, thank you. Thank you.